What is good, Duelist? I have another video for you today. It's been a little minute. I made another video and it sucked, so I didn't upload it. But we're back. I'm shaved, whatever. Dortmund just ended Germany. Crazy that Rika won. And Vanquish still got second. So it's really anyone's format, I would say right now. Um, but, you know, if you've been watching, I don't really give a fuck about that because I'm just trying to win Indy, and I hope you guys are too. Um, or maybe if you're playing in regionals, I'm sure that that format definitely matters a lot. But I'm excited about post AGOV, and I have some more um, decks from the OCG. It just got posted today. It was a 3v3 in Osaka, and um, a lot of cool decks from this. So we're going first with the tier... Uh, not Cash Dira, but tier like Synchro, I guess. Obviously, you just have Chaos Rulers. So in, in OCG, it's definitely more like 50-50, whether they play this build or um, the Horus Engine. Now, I think the Horus Engine would actually be better versus like... Um, I think it would I think the Horus Engine would actually be better versus Maxi just because of like the other effects they have. So Say you pitch like, you know, the wind one that can add two cards from the grave or banish to hand or deck. Like that card's really good. So yeah, that card might be worth summoning um, for them to draw a card. And um, obviously uh, Maxi is a format defining card. But at the same time, if I had a Chaos Ruler, I feel like there's no way, especially in the TCG, there's no way I would not play Tier Lament with this card. Especially with the Die Bell Star. We don't even see the Die Bell Star package in here. With the uh, Jet Synchron, the um, whatever this guy's called, the tuner that reduces his level. Um, yeah, a lot of standard stuff. One Rhino. I mean, the Unicorn's interesting to search Birth or, um, yeah, really just search Birth. And then we have three Tier Cash because that's a really good card. Um, is there anything else? I kind of gave a lot of input on this deck already. I mean, obviously there's like specifics, like he's running the Poly with this, um, the Trevi Karma, two Sulik, one Metanoise. I think the Metanoise is kind of interesting because they don't actually have uh, Fenrir. So you'd think with uh, Kesh Deer not being a prevalent deck, Metanoise is going to go out of favor with a lot of like the TCG decks. Um, they'll probably just run Sulik alone. Because his graveyard effect's better and, you know, negating an effect. Like, set Book of Mooning a card was only really good when they summoned a like, Fenrir versus the Cash Deer matchup. But it's still Foolish Burial too. I mean, that's always good. <laughs> and then we have a Danger build. So, really not caring about Maxi. The card destruction. This looks pretty similar to uh, the last update I saw. I think they're siding. Yeah, they only side one Maxi. The other list I saw too... When they're playing the dangers, they're actually not maining Maxi, which just seems crazy to me. But um, they do have the one in the side, I'm pretty sure, because Goki Pool can search Maxi. I'm not too sure about that. Um, it's been a while since the Insect deck was relevant, so I don't really remember that. But um, yeah, just one Maxi is so crazy to me. Then we have an Emancipator with the Block Dragon. This card is banned in the TCG and in Master Duel now. Um, I hate this card. I hate this whole deck, this like whole archetype. It's so, it seems really fun to play. I mean, it's very um, reminiscent of Monster Mash. And I did love that deck with um, the Guthix or Gale, Wind Force, whatever, the level three where you meld the monster. Played that deck a lot and that had a lot of fun. Doom Caliber is one of my favorite cards, you know. So I do think it's that, that part about it's cool, but this deck can just like do so much, especially even going second. Like grinding versus this deck in Master Duel was not a good time. Um, yeah, but it's really irrelevant here, sadly, because no block dragon really nerfs the whole deck. And then this is what I'm excited to see. We have the Rescue Ace deck. So we have one Die Bell Star. We're running the Rescue HQ. So um, this is definitely a point I would want to make. So every OCG deck I've looked at, they posted like seven of these articles, and I've only seen one Rescue Ace deck without, without HQ. I don't think Rescue HQ is that necessary, at least not. I definitely think it was necessary before, but I don't think it's as necessary now. I think the games go quicker, and that kind of like recursion follow-up may not be necessary, especially when it's kind of a brick to draw. Um, they're also running, I think, Impulse is low-key a brick, um, but they're running Fire Engine and the Mini Graceful. We don't see that a lot. Usually players just pick one or the other. Um, obviously, Fire Engine's really good if you open it with... Um, the uh, Preventer, because then you can special it from your hand with the level 4. 
But I, I mean, it's just like a lot of cards that are like semi bricks. Um, three Ash, three Max C. Maybe Impulse gets better with Max C too, being in the format. I guess I don't know because then they could just chain us. So maybe it's actually worse. Three Emergency, obvious. Um, anything interesting? Two Super Poly. I see a lot of Super Poly in the Rescue Ace decks. Maybe it's also to like um, make their guys go through. I mean, we just see the Dark Fusion, Garura now. Pretty cool Mud Dragon. Um, yeah, I don't know. We have three Super Poly, so it's always something to think about, but I don't think I would play it. I also noticed a lot of them side uh, the Reinforce, the other Rescue Ace Trap. Let's see. Yeah, he's siding it. Along with two Evenlies. I know Thrust is pretty big in these uh, OCG decks. They're only siding one, though. I think Thrust is going to be really good going into next format. Two SP, I do agree, is mandatory. This new XYZ, he's like, all right. I've been testing him a lot. Um... It seems like he would come up, and then he doesn't, and I would I just lose anyway. So that's my thoughts on the card, but it's definitely a good asset like Zeus. But um, not being able to special summon at all, my Rescue Ace might not be the deck where it like thrives. Um, now the Nightmare Phoenix and Unicorn would another SP be better? Maybe better than Unicorn because it's like, why do you really need the Link Three? Are you gonna make Apple or Access Code after? Maybe, I guess, um, you are discarding a card. Nightmare Phoenix is cool with Link Rebo. You get to draw a card um, when you destroy two. And then Tour Guide of the Underworld. They're setting another Rescue HQ. That is really weird. But, well, what are you going to say? Lots of Recursion, lots of uh, Double Summon. I mean, Double Summon is just a terrible effect to me. So, that's not why we're playing the card. It's not Rota. But when our Turbulence resolves, if we still need more after our Turbulence already resolved, then we are going to need that HQ. Like, that just sounds wild. I already want plus four. I'm already one in the game, uh, in my opinion. But another tier list, and this one has the Adventure Package. So the Adventure Package has not really seen play in America in so long since Prank Kids. I don't think it's really been that viable. Um, even... They're playing, I, I assume this list has Revolution Synchron. I just saw the Nichiria Beast in the extra deck, so I would assume you'd play Revolution Synchron because that's kind of like a two-card Nat Beast with the uh, rights you make Baron and Nichiria Beast, but um, really interesting they're not. Revolution Synchron, I think, is so good with the Adventure Package, but guess what? Um, if you're going first, you're already in such an advantageous position that... You probably don't need all of those cards. Like your engine should just do enough, and these are like kind of non-engine cards. That's why I always thought the um, rights package and the adventure package would be better with a uh, as extenders, not as a solemn judgment or cross-out designator. I like them better as like a level four monster and a level seven monster. That seems pretty good. Um, obviously, Griffin effect is good, but it is banned over there, um, and we don't even see an illegal knight, right? So it's really just Search Enchantress, Special Summon on level 3. Um, it's the point, Yo, and then you get my mouse died. So, went to the gym. Let's go! Alright, let's get into it. Final uh, second place deck, because it was a 3v3. We have at Ignister at me. Why don't you? So we have 3 Ash, 3 Valor is the non-engine Imperms. I always think this deck is pretty good, especially with the Math Mech package. Or, like... I mean, it's crazy that in the OCG, Circular is actually a one. Like, that's mind-boggling to me with, like, just how irrelevant low-key Math Mech has been. I definitely have always considered it better than what people give it credit for. And, I mean, just the Ignister package, being able to do the towers um, with the uh, Monster Engrave um, to uh, negate. It's always been good. The Axis Code, Transcode Talker has always been good to me. Um, yeah, nothing... Oops. Nothing much... To say about this list, besides that they're running um, designator targets, it's so interesting too that the OCG, they'll actually do like one designator and have multiple targets for it. And it's like, is Ogre or Moonlight Chill better? And is that worth playing like the one of designator? I don't know. That just seems weird to me, um, theory wise. Then, um, anything cool about the side deck? I mean, two robberies, one D barrier. They're not playing thrust, so that's kind of weird. Um, you know, I just won, especially. I don't think they have any way to search it, so. Definitely interesting. And a third place list with the Unchained. Um, they're actually playing Unchained in the OCG now. I wonder if, like, TCG had anything to do with it. Like, them, like, winning YCSs. 
um, and this deck was pretty irrelevant just because everyone pretty much agrees that it's probably Max C why Unchained wasn't actually played as much. Also, they just love Tear so much, so it's really hard to say why Unchained hasn't been as prevalent, but it did get third place, and I'm sure there was not a lot of uh, Unchained actually in this tournament. Oh, unfortunately, we don't have a pie graph. I thought maybe we did, so I wasted time scrolling up. It's okay, though. So, anything cool about this Unchained list? They have the, um, I think this guy's like a Floodgate, the level 1 Pendulum. Um, sorry, I don't know what every card does. Um, I'm trying my best. But, anything cool about this list? They're running the spell card, which, you know, I definitely have seen more Unchained decks get hip to the um, spell card. I definitely think it's good, not the Rota, obviously, but the... Continuous spell. We see Ultimate Slayer. Um, I also would love to know what that Synchro is in the extra deck. I'm assuming it's just an Ultimate Slayer target um, that has a broken graveyard effect. Scythe and two Sanctums, which is crazy with no Dagda. It's like, why not just side three Sanctums? We have two Evenlies, one Thrust, so I guess you are kind of siding three Sanctums, but not really. Um, yeah, OCG ratios are always so crazy to me. Then we have the danger, another danger Shizu, so another danger tier limit um, in the top cut. And with Maxi, it's kind of crazy. And they're not running the Die Bell Star cards. So if you think Die Bell Star cards are good in the tier deck, I'm I would definitely reconsider because we don't have this broken ass level eight synchro. What do we have? We have like the black wing that mills if you take effect damage. That's like best case. Um, so I definitely don't think the Die Bell Stars. Are going to be good since OCG is not playing them and um, they're playing like they're not playing them and they have chaos rulers so why wouldn't she why would you play it um, and then uh, again citing three max C so it's like a lot of decks doing well without three max C in the main which is so crazy you know it's like the format defining card we say it's so broken um, it can never come back it should be banned which I agree with um, but it's actually not in the main deck just because of the dangerous discard effects and then we have another Unchained doing well, kind of similar, kind of like card for card, same list, except they're maining Droll and Effect Veiler with no Ghost Ogre. I don't see how Ghost Ogre would be that great of a card, so I'm not surprised. Um, do we have Super Poly? No, Super Poly. Um, we're citing it, I'm guessing, because we see the three fusions of the extra deck. So Super Poly is so popular in Japan. Um, definitely really cool. Having Glow Up Bob is also just like so sweet with this deck. Um, I definitely want to see Glow Up Bob come back. I definitely think it could. Oh, we're actually citing a time card. We haven't been seeing uh, many time cards in the side deck. Always in every deck. You know what I do notice? SP Little Knight and uh, Baron is in a lot of them as well. And those are two cards that I think are just overpowered right now, um, especially with the Die Bell Star cards. But we get to uh, fourth place. I'm pretty sure this is fourth place team. And we finally see a Die Bell Star package, and they're only running two Quick Play, which is just so weird to me. But you know what's cool is if you do mill the Quick Play and you mill the Sinful Spoils uh, spell card, um, you could use both in the same turn because you didn't activate its other effects. So you can actually, you know, search a Jet Synchron from your deck and draw a card if you mill it. That's pretty good, especially when we think about like Foolish Burial Goods. I could definitely see like maybe a cool package with the Die Bell Stars would be like. And especially in tier, would be foolish three foolish burial goods, um, one of the quick play and a curry kara. So you could search curry kara with this outright, um, or you know foolish burial Sulek or trivi karma. You know whatever you want. But I definitely think that's um, a neat little interaction, a neat little idea. And then we have three heartbeat in the side. Grass is greener because um, it really is FOMO. And then we have Runic actually getting a fifth spot. So Runic Stun actually has gotten a lot more popular in DB, but we not, didn't really see it perform um, in Dortmund as much as as prevalent as it has been on DB. But that's also probably because people are just playing the most brainless deck um, to just get out of those first ranks so they can get to the real meta and like the real competitive aspect. So I'm not surprised, three card demise. Um, there can only be one, it's just such a good card right now. That's why I think we saw Vanquish Soul in the finals. Um, side, bunch of stun cards. I mean, what more can you say? It's a stun deck. I think the new XYZ is pretty good for these deck these stun decks, because it's like, if I really got to, I can normal summon Maxine overlay into this guy. So that's pretty cool. Um, another danger tier. Anything else interesting? Let's get to a pearly. I think pearly, um, the Shadal package is definitely coming back, or at least the Dark World engine, I think is going to be a lot better for Pearly, considering Arise Heart Ban 
and we see it as the first pearly that has done well is actually playing a Merly and the Shadal package, which I think is really cool. Um, you know, just the ability to make Winda is kind of insane when you think of it in a pearly deck. Um, another thing to consider, I don't know if Mud Dragon would be good because you already have the uh, the old spell to protect your guys. Obviously, we have three Sleepy. They get to run red reboot. We don't. That card's banned. I wish it wasn't. Um, <laughs> it would even be cooler with the Rescue Ace matchup, I believe. Um, anything else to say? Summon Limit, I actually think, is a really good card again, too, as a Floodgate. But it is going first card, and when you already have Dimensional Barrier, which overlaps with, like, Tier, Despia, Branded Chimera, and Pearly, it's good versus all those decks. Pretty much any deck that's not a Link, Manadium. Um, I don't know if Summon Limit's actually worth playing. Now we have a uh, Salad deck, 3 Gazelle, let's go. We actually haven't seen Salad pop off that much lately. Um, three Traps, three Salad Traps, three Kaiser Coliseum. It's been a minute since I've actually seen that card. Kaiser Coliseum, one of the most ignorant cards ever, Bujin meta. Um, definitely, if you remember that, it was not fun. I remember just like not drawing an MST game one out of like 30 draws and then I just lost. Um, so annoying. Mikanko. So Mikanko actually did really well at this YCS past weekend. So it's definitely an underrated deck, I would say. Um, I played with these cards during tier format. So a long time ago when we had three Shizus just to test them because they just came out. Um, and their equip cards are actually really powerful. This one we see Nadir Servant. We see some Brick equips, which I never like running Bricks in my deck. But um, we are running the Dogmatica with the uh, Nadir to Foolish either Herald to add the Ritual Garura to draw a card, Omega to put something back, Entus to destroy. Um, I don't know what a lot of, like, these four XYZs, I don't really know what they are. Not gonna lie. Not going cap with you. Okay, and then we have a Infernoble, the new Infernoble um, spell in the side deck. I wonder what that's for. Does it protect something? Oh, you do have a fire, um, so that's probably why they're siding it. Definitely a cool tech. More Kaisers um, in the Salad deck. So another Salad deck doing well with the Kaiser Coliseum. Um, we do have the Transco Talker. I saw some of them siding this card, which is definitely weird to me. I mean, the, like OT King is so good. We had the three Rivalry as our Floodgate side of choice going first. Um, going second, we pretty much have just a ton of hand traps. Three Ash, two Ogre, one Moonlight, three Valor, DD Crow, Maxi. Um, so three, six, nine, twelve. 13, 15, 16 with the Imperms, and then we are running... So a lot of one of Designators in these OCG lists. Um, and then B-Block. So, oh, this was the other side of the bracket, I suppose. So Pearly actually won this side of the bracket, so that's nice for Pearly. Um, they're not running the Dark World package or Shadows, which I definitely think is uh, weird, but, you know, you got to fit in three Yeep, and when you're running the Desires, like some of these builds are a lot in the OCG... Which is just crazy to me, but I guess you can with three delicious. Um, you might not be able to fit all that stuff in. We see the three summon limit again in the side. We see a D Fisher um, in the side for going first. I'm assuming maybe going second. Uh, D Fisher is actually kind of cool in this deck because you get to activate all your spells and still use all those effects. You know, um, it's really good. I would say with like just my friend still being able to resolve. Um, you can't special stuff in the grave, and that's definitely going to come up when you're playing Pearly, is using the field spell to get that recursion from the grave. Once you're out of the six monsters, you're basically done. So that could hurt, but materials for XYZs actually go to the grave, so you can still get your like black cat and white cat in the graveyard, which is really nice. Um, not much difference, because these guys are teammates between the list, except two Valor instead, and running Prosperity in the main. I definitely like that. Um, they're both running the Leerlesk, so their extra decks are pretty card for card identical. So they're, or he's running Link, uh, Link Rebo, and he's running Anima. I do like Anima a lot in this deck. Um, it just comes up, especially, uh, one thing to consider with the, uh, next format with AGOB coming out is people are going to be making the Link 6 Firewall, which, you know, points directly forward, or Apo, for example, and uh, with Rescue Ace, so Anima can be really good in that situation. You know, it's normal summon Hydrant or normal summon a Pearly. Make Anima effect on the firewall, bait out and negate. 
Um, definitely a nice little neat interaction. We have another rescue ace running the three impulse. Definitely crazy to me. Jet Synchron with just a Baron in the extra deck. So we're really just using Jet Synchron as an extender. Um, I would have to, I don't know. I've not liked Jet Synchron that much. I don't know why you would play it, but Nibiru is not as prevalent. Like we see all these main decks and they're not maining Nibiru. So it's really weird that in the TCG, we always go in and out of like teching Nibiru and it like drastically changes how you play going first. Um, but it's so much more prevalent in America because uh, we don't have Max C obviously. That it's hard to build your deck around it. So that's why I hate Jet Synchron because it's not really, it doesn't really help you with playing around Nibiru. You have to make like Link Rebo, then Boral Code. Um, they're not even playing the Boral um, for the uh, additional level eight Synchro Omni Negate. Which is, that's why it's just weird to me, because it's like, with this deck, to make Baron, you'd have to summon Turbulence. You're probably going to want to use the Turbulence effect before you get rid of it, unless you can recur it with, like, a Preventer. But, you know, those hands are already so good. Like, in the TCG, if you have uh, Turbulence with Preventer, you can already play around Nibiru by just banishing the Turbulence, make IP with the token, summon back Turbulence, Turbulence effect. So... That's why I don't think the beer is going to be that good um, going into the next format. But, you know, it's always better when it's not good and it's uh, worse when it is good. So that's really what's weird about Nibiru. As players adapt. What the hell is this? It's a pendulum deck, but I don't know really any of these pendulum cards. Um, Bay Lantis. I definitely should research this deck because um, I've actually never heard about it which is strange. Um, we got the Secret Village. So we're making Secret Village going first with the Magic Specter Pegasus, or Majesty's Pegasus, I forget. Um, definitely nice, good card. If you, if you haven't watched my Magic Specter Pendulum combo uh, profile, the Pendulums can go insane, and they're going to get insane with Phantom Nightmare. Three Prohibition, crazy side deck. Um, whenever we're setting Prohibition, that means this card deck loses really hard to one card. I wonder if it's uh, Nibiru. The Fossil Dino is also really cool. So this deck seems really floodgatey, which is why I'm sure we have the uh, double called by and the talents. Um, and then we have the new Link 3 that's also really good with uh, Astrograph, but they're not even playing Astrograph. <sighs> um, super Heavy Samurai Centrion. So Centrion's actually going with the Super Heavy Samurai package. Like I mentioned before, they, you know, I've seen Theron builds um, with this deck. I've seen a lot of different variants. As They're all pretty much running the King Calamity, though, just for that FTK potential. Um, I definitely want to wait more to talk about this deck when it gets closer and players actually start to care because it's not coming out of AGOB. Bestial Buster Blader. That's kind of a fun phrase to say, Vistial Buster Blader. <laughs> um, anything cool? Wow, so many Vistials are at one in the OCG. Uh, definitely gives tier above. Um, yeah, that's crazy. Ball Drake, Lebellion. I mean, Dragon Link's pretty overpowered, right? And they still got Chaos Ruler. Um, this deck is a Floodgatey mess. <laughs> we got five traps. We have the Floodgate with the Buster Bladers. This deck looks really fun. Um, not much to say. The Synchro is actually really good. The Buster Blader Synchro. Anything cool about another Rescue Ace list? Do we notice any trends? I mean, it's basically the same thing. We see the Super Polys. This time, he's just running Garura and Mud Dragon. We've seen two SP in pretty much every Rescue Ace list. A lot of them running the Tory Guide from the Underworld, which is kind of better versus Rogue decks. Selene obviously gets better with the Die Bell Star package. Um, we see the HQ again. We don't see a sided second HQ. We do see the Reinforce in the side deck, um, which is really, like, I wonder why they're siding Reinforce. Because I have not, I, I've played with the card just because I see all these OCG lists um, playing the Reinforce, and I have not really seen, seen it come up, like, practically. Um, obviously, it's more advantage. Like, maybe you'd rather set it, because usually either the Reborn or the Rota is the worst one to set with Turbulence because they don't do anything. But if you're playing a deck like against a deck like Tier, the Reborn can be really broken when they like say activate Keldo, um, pitch for cost. Um, whenever they try to pitch the Kelbeck or Gito for cost, the Reborn is just insane. Um, pretty much anything that's pitch for cost that has really good activatable effects, even Tier Cash could be um, a considerate for a target. Anything. Um, else to say 
Another Rescue Ace, they're on the same team, so their lists are pretty much identical. Of course, the Rescue Ace deck is going to run three of the Quick Play, because why not? See, a lot of players also running Veilers in the Rescue Ace deck to justify the new one-for-one, one because, you know, you might need a normal summon it and uh, activate the one-for-one one on it, but I think you're already losing. I would definitely just, like, even if Talents is bad, I would definitely rather play Imperm, because just because a card bat is bad, quote, doesn't mean that everyone's not going to play it, so I would rather just play the Imperm, and you know what, if I can't play um, because I needed a normal summon of Baylor and use the new one-for-one one on it, so be it, I lost. Um, it's a one card, and if I open any of the Die Bell Star engine, then I can just use it on that. Um, Citing one of each of the Bestials, a lot of three Nibiru's actually in the side, or two of Nibiru. Um, and it's interesting, we've noticed that a lot of these decks are going away from the Synchro Package, which I believe is really good. Um, we see three Hydrants and only two Impulse, but they're still running the two uh, Bricks, like the Graceful and the Fire Engine. It's really interesting to me. Um, maybe I should test those cards more because I just do not like them at all. But I do feel like you have to run at least one Impulse. Um, this deck is just a mess because we don't have Aurora on. Um, they're also running the card where you have to discard for cost. Sometimes that does come up to like summon your Turbulence or Preventer and really get going. But not often enough where I could see you playing it. We see the Selene again for the Diabell Star. We're running two of the Diabell Star, girl. I definitely don't think that's bad. I like that it's a 40 card list. I actually like this list a lot. If I was playing the OCG with Aurora Don, I would probably play something like this. Like, yeah, I mean, I think it's overpowered. Obviously, it loses harder to maxi, but... What are you going to do? Anything cool? I mean, it's just another fire uh, or rescue ace deck that isn't really doing anything different because they're on the same team. They're both siding three dogwood. Um, and then we have another rescue ace list. So all of them are pretty much playing the exact same rescue ace list, which just speaks volumes for the deck. Um, this one, obviously not running the Aurora Dawn package, but we are setting the three dogwoods, two talents. So the side decks are identical. We also see a lot of called by. Obviously, called by an ash does come up a lot with the emergency needing to resolve, but I think your deck's just already so strong going first. Only if turbulence resolves, so I get it. But I don't know. I would rather just have more non-engine going second with this deck. We finally see a branded deck with Nadir servants. Um, Brand infusion is at one in the OCG, so it makes sense that it's not doing too well. We see two secret villages in the side. Um, anything else that's really cool about this list? I mean, we got the deployment. You know, pretty much nothing really to say. I mean, obviously Nadir Servant, you know, Send Albion, pretty broken. Uh, even Garura. Oh, Horus Centrion. So another Centrion deck actually doing pretty well. This time using the Horus package, which is a lot of fodder for free. Um, practically for free. I mean, if you draw this guy, it's just the nuts because you get to draw a card and you already got one in the grave. Um, then your deck a little bit. Supreme King Magician, another Pendulum deck. I don't think Pendulums will be that good um, until we get uh, Phantom Nightmare with the new Magic Spectre cards. I mean, I think this is just kind of uh, random. It's it's just like like too many of these old cards were played. When I played Pendulum with like the Magicians and everything, when these cards first came out, like Skull C Crobat Joker, um, I actually got second at the YCS Atlanta with the only, where they had the E-ban list, the last E-ban list. Um, deck was just so broken, but with the new rule and uh, just like, you know, power creep, I don't see how these cards could be that good. We got the one of Astrograph. Um, and then we have another Manadium. Running the Hero Lives package and the new level 4. I think the new level 4 is actually going to put Manadium on the map a little more. Um, definitely. We see another tier. Shizu list. Centrion. Oh, and that's it. Alright guys, well, I think this was a really long OCG breakdown, but with 3v3 events, it kind of tends to work that way. If you enjoyed the video, or if you'd want me to post my other OCG breakdown, um, that I kind of scrapped. Let me know. Uh, this was a really long one, but I appreciate any support you have for me and have a great day.